Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things international student related. And today I'm going to talk about what kind of jobs international students are eligible for when they are in school, whether it's on campus and off campus, and what kind of job you're eligible for once you graduate. So if you want to learn more about what kind of jobs are available, what's the difference between OPT and CPT if you've heard this, these terms, and um, what advantages or disadvantages come with each, then keep on watching. All right, the first and most common one that's available to international students is on-campus jobs. On-campus jobs are available for everybody that's an, inter that's an international student. The restrictions usually are that you can only work 20 hours a week when you are in school, so when school's in session, and then 40 hours a week um, when you're out of school, so when it's holiday, Thanksgiving break, Easter break, summer break, you can work 40 hours like everybody else. Unfortunately, this is the only option for first year students. So if you're a freshman, this is the only kind of job you're eligible for as an international student. Um, once you go into your second, third, fourth year, you have more options. But first year, you're just allowed to work on campus with the restrictions that come with it. If you are looking for a job on campus, the best or at least what I did when I was looking for a job my freshman year. I just went to my international student's office um, and asked them like what kind of jobs are available and one of my jobs was actually at the international student office. Uh, I know some schools don't have a great international student office so what you could do is either go um, to your financial aid office, I think every school has that, and ask them like what kind of jobs are available on campus. Or the second option is really kind of talk to your dorm, uh, like people that you live with, what kind of jobs they have, if it's on campus, off campus. But there's usually, there's always um, on campus job available every time, all the time. I've never heard of a case where there wasn't. So on campus job is usually a safe bet for everybody. Now on to the more exciting stuff, um, off campus jobs. What kind of off campus jobs are available to international students? Well, there's two categories basically. There's CPT and OPT. Uh, CPT stands for Curricular Practical Training and it's basically a work authorization for internships. And then OPT is Optional Practical Training and usually it's made for once you graduate, you wanna you know, practice what you learned. So the government is gonna give you 12 months for you to get an OPT and you can work in an industry and pretty much practice what you learned. What's common between OPT and CPT? There are three things and I'm gonna read them because I can't remember them. They both give you permission to work off campus. Whatever you decide to do with your OPT or CPT must be related to what you study. You can't say that your diploma is in marketing and then you decide to go into filmmaking as your off campus job. It can't work like that. If it's marketing, it needs to be something like a marketing manager, social media manager, like something that relates to marketing. And it's really not that hard to relate um, a job to what you studied. You just need to apply to things that are, you know, related. And then the third thing that they, all, they both have in common is that you need the help of your DSO to apply for these work authorization. Uh, your DSO needs to pretty much say, hey, I know my student is doing this, this aligns with what they studied at our school, um, I approve basically. And then you send your file to USCIS, they review it, they say cool, everything was great. Now let's go into the differences. Let's start with CPT because it's the easiest one. Um, CPT is meant for any extra internship or training needed in your curriculum. A lot of schools require you to have an internship or some type of, some type of industry work experience uh, as part of their courses. Not all schools have it, but most schools require something like that and the CPT allows you to do that. The CPT process is so, so much easier than the OPT process because you don't even have to send anything to USCIS. It's your DSO that fills out everything for you and helps you out with it. And it basically has like um, um, kind of like an extra line on your I-20 that says, hey, the student is doing this and it's related to their major in this way. I can only speak to my experience with CPT. I used CPT to intern at Microsoft last year because I was still in school. Uh, but I, I understand based on the conversations that I've had with other international students that 
CPT requirements are different for each school. So I can't really give you like a step-by-step -step process for that. I just know that the commonality between the CPT application is that you need your DSO to help you with it. It needs to be related to your curriculum, your course, and it's a much easier process than getting an OPT. Now moving on to OPT, which is the most confusing one for me personally, there are two types of OPT um, subsets basically. So there's OPT and there's like pre-completion OPT and post-completion OPT. What does pre-completion OPT mean? It means that I am a student, maybe I'm a sophomore, and I somehow find employment in something related to my major, let's say math. I'm, I'm a math major and I find a data analyst position, but it's not really um, an, an on-campus offer, it's an off-campus offer, maybe I network with somebody and they are offering me a position from um, October 21st to January 21st, so three months. What I need to do, because this job offer is off campus, I need to go to my DSO uh, and I need to tell them, hey, um, I'm a sophomore year in applied math and I got a position or I got an offer for a data analyst. Can you help me get an OPT? And my DSO is like, sure, this looks like it goes along with your major. This looks like it makes sense for you and your career and your courses, um, we're gonna fill out something called I-735, I think. Something like that. It's like a form, it's like a long ass form with all types of questions related to you as a student and maybe what you're majoring in. You fill that out with your DSO, send it to USCIS, and USCIS is gonna review it and be like, okay, this makes sense for Gaju. Gaju got a position or got an offer as a data analyst. She's asking for an OPT from, uh, what did I say? October 21st to January 21st. And we're gonna give her an OPT for four months. So it's pre-completion because I'm a sophomore in college. So I haven't finished my, my major, right? And I'm asking for OPT for four months. Now, once I finish school, right, and I ask for an OPT post-completion, so now we finish school and it's post-completion. When I was a sophomore, I asked for four months. And now that I'm a senior and I'm about to finish school, I am allowed eight months. Eight plus four equals 12. That's, that's the difference between pre-completion and post-completion. This is a disclaimer to please not come from my comments and point out the fact that I miscalculated three months versus four months. I promise I can do basic math. Or can I? I hope the example made sense for you because it's really hard to explain like all the nuances. And I actually linked a bunch of articles that explain the differences between CPT, OPT, pre-completion, post-completion, and uh, what uh, STEM extension means. I'm not gonna get into STEM extension other than when you majored in STEM, science, technology, engineering, or math, you are allowed a, a total of 36 months rather than 12 months. So you can look into that. I linked articles. I try my best to explain the differences. Uh, this video is mostly to kind of give a surface level explanation of what kind of jobs are available to you as an international student because it's a question I definitely had um, when I was in, still in school. I wanted to make money. <laughs> I needed to make money, uh, so I personally didn't want to take away from my OPT time, so I was just working a bunch of on-campus jobs that would help me make the money I needed to make every month. So um, on average, I had about three jobs every semester, and um, when I wasn't in school, I would just work a full 40 hours to make some money. Basically, I hope you were able to follow through with my example. I hope that made a little bit of sense. If you're confused, Again, the articles are linked below for you to just analyze at your own pace and kind of understand at your own pace. I basically hope that um, this video did give you a few pointers. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell um, because next week I'm actually going to be talking about my truth about post-grad life. I graduated a couple months ago. I've been working full-time for a couple months and 2020 just hasn't been easy. Let's be real, it hasn't. So I'm gonna be talking about my truth about post-grad life and what I'm experiencing, the pros and the cons and all of that. 